Good morning. It is Monday, February 15th. My name is Jason Stanton. I serve as senior pastor at First Lutheran in Onalaska, Wisconsin. And being a Monday, I uh, was thinking about something I've, I, was, I was learning recently. Um, for Christmas this past year, I got a membership to a master class. And one of the classes I've taken recently was on sleep. Matthew Walker is a sleep scientist, a, a leader in his field. And he calls sleep the elixir of life. I always love that word, elixir. So uh, he also calls it the Swiss army knife of health. And he says that because uh, there's, I mean, sleep does a lot of things, but he, he really lifts up especially three things. One is uh, your immune system restocks the arsenal each night. And so, you know, through the course of REM sleep, rapid eye movement, and non-REM sleep, uh, your body is doing some different things, but it needs to go through a certain number of cycles to, like, completely restock the immunity that your body needs for the next day. The other, uh, another uh, big category was um, your brain. What, what happens in your brain while you sleep? Uh, he actually points out parts of your brain are 30% more active when you're sleeping than when you're awake, which is pretty amazing. Uh, and the kinds of things that your brain can do in, in your sleep is organize your thoughts and also commit your short-term memories into longer-term memories. And so they've actually done a bunch of studies on learning, for example, and when someone is taught something, the next night's sleep matters a lot. And the night after that, and the night after that, that actually up to five nights after you learn something, the quality and quantity of your sleep can matter to how well you learn something. I, that's amazing to me uh, because it's in your sleep time that your brain makes sense of and puts the information in the right spots for you to recall it later. The third big category is your circulatory system. Uh, your, your blood pressure and your heart benefit from a kind of a recalibration while you sleep. And the, the craziest thing that uh, he told me in this masterclass was that uh, each year he said, you know, 1.6 billion people unknowingly, um, well, kind of knowingly, but anyway, they, they do a grand experiment really all together. Um, and those two times a year are for daylight savings, when we lose an hour in the spring and gain an hour in the fall. And what they've actually found, the data shows that, this is insane to me, the day after the, the all those who participate in daylight savings, the day after we lose an hour of sleep in the spring, the number of heart attacks among those 1.6 billion people increases by 24% over a over an average day. And that's not that didn't just happen one year. Like this is the this is the average of what happens the day after daylight savings. The day after people gain an hour of sleep in the fall, heart attacks go down by 21%. Almost the same amount that they go up in the spring. It just shows how important the quality and quantity of our sleep is uh, for every day and that our systems are actually quite fragile. Uh, that, that when, and don't we all know that, you know, when you, when you have a bad night's sleep, the next day is different. It's not as great as the typical day of, of how you might get your rest. Anyway, it's not, his other point is it's not that sleep is the only thing that we need to do well to be well. Uh, you know, diet and exercise and lots of other stuff matter. But a third of our lives are spent sleeping, if we're sleeping well. And so it must be really important. It's at the core of a healthy life. So I watched this last week, just before writing a confirmation lesson on worship. Not, not things that are worshipful. You know, when you go to that special place where you, where you can be with God by yourself, um, I can name those places in my life. I'll bet you can too. Um, maybe it's where something special happened. Maybe it's out in nature where you, where you connect in a way that you don't anywhere else. All that is worshipful. I was doing a lesson on worship, like communal Christian worship. Uh, 
which can be done outside, it can be done in the sanctuary, whatever it is, but it's done with others. And as I was writing this, since I was writing something for confirmation, just so you know how I'm doing confirmation this year, is on Zoom, and the kids meet for their small groups with a guide on Zoom, uh, but they meet every other week. And on the off weeks for meeting their small groups, I post a lesson to YouTube uh, that they're invited to, and that lesson's 20 to 30 minutes, typically more like 30 because I'm long-winded, uh, but it's on all kinds of different stuff. And as I thought about what I wanted to say about worship, I couldn't stop thinking about how similar worship is to sleep. You know, worship is the elixir of a faith life, I would say. It is the Swiss army knife of faith. Because it speaks to and supports, just like sleep, you know, these three huge things that I, that I spoke of, your immune response, your, your brain, and your, your uh, circulatory system and heart, just like sleep does so much for, I mean, that's, those are big things. Worship does that because it, it speaks to and supports our identity. Like, who am I? That's a question humans have often. Um, and we get reminded at worship, I am a child of God. That's who I am. There's lots of stuff that happens during the week that we might start to question that or forget that. Uh, but we're called and claimed as God's own. And so worship reminds us of our identity. Who am I? The second thing that I, I thought about is how worship shapes our worldview. Like, okay, this is who I am, but how do I, how do I be in this world? So many other messages are trying to have us care for ourself and only ourself. And our worldview and worship gets shaped to love our neighbor rather than just ourself. You know, love your neighbor doesn't just come naturally. The third big thing is it feeds us literally, spiritually, with the living word. Uh, in the midst of all that life brings, scripture uh, feeds our souls. Holy communion feeds our souls. And so we're reminded of who am I? Uh, we're shaped to love our neighbor. We're fed and nourished in this living word. And then the last thing I, I thought about was it, it becomes the source of courage as we're sent out to love in the name of Christ. You know, for the rest of the week, we might run up against a difficult conversation we need to have or a difficult choice we need to make. And we can ground our, our decisions and the ways we behave with others. We can ground it all in that worship service we had where we heard that scripture or we were reminded of God's grace and we feel the courage to go be the hands and feet of Christ in the world. Uh, worship, communal, with other people worship is essential. I hope that helps shape uh, your week and maybe encourage you uh, in your life of faith as we seek to keep faith alive.